Hello everybody. Um, this is Mr. A. Um, so today I'm gonna show you all of this materials that I use for painting. And I want to show you this book. It's the Art Institute of Chicago. This is one of my favorite books. It's a tiny little book, but it has some amazing paintings in here. In my opinion, the Art, the Art Institute of Chicago is probably the second best museum in the United States right now. And I mean, I'm not talking uh, about it lightly. Um, basically, it's one of the most important museums right now because um, they have a university. And what's amazing about this museum is like when you go to the Art, the, the Art Institute of Chicago, uh, the university, you can actually open and see the drawings of the masters and, and the letters. And I think they have a couple letters by Monet and, and Van Gogh. And also you can see Greek sculptures and they have a tunnel actually, like from the actual school, the, 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 the Art Institute of Chicago, the school, and they have a tunnel going from the school, which is across the street to the actual museum. And so today I wanted to show you some of the stuff that I use. Um, this should be interesting for you guys if you want to paint in oil. So I am probably going to be showing you uh, some demos of oil painting. I have this big 48 by 48 canvas and today we're probably gonna do, I mean. Okay, so I'm gonna show you most of the things. So this first is the Chicago Art Institute, the book. And in here we can find uh, some famous, like Edward Hopper, for example, the night, um, uh, this is a sergeant in 166 these are uh monet claude monet um these are some of the beautiful ones he traveled to london he traveled to london in order to paint this uh because well right after when claude monet uh, he traveled to italy he was really inspired by italian art but um he met a lot of artists in in england he right after um he he moved for a couple months from actually from for three months i if i remember right during the war he had to escape so he moved to england during this time he just wanted to paint english landscapes and i'm pretty sure he got really inspired by turner which i'm gonna show you who turner is i don't think they have a turner in here actually because turner was a, a, a an artist who did almost thirty thousand thirty seven thousand watercolor this is another monet you see, like um, after he built this pond, he built his own pond um, outside of his house. And it's so interesting, this guy, he, Manet was so obsessed, obsessive. He was really obsessed with uh, lily ponds. He actually hired somebody to collect every single lily pond around the world, uh, different kinds, every single different kind of lily pots around the war, world. And it actually was really hard to to have a lily pond um, in French weather because it was too cold and it was really difficult. Um, so actually, the gardener that he hired, he actually created a new type of lily pond for his um, for his garden. Um, let me see. This is Touchman, uh, a famous American artist. This is one of the most famous paintings in Chicago Art Institute right now. Um, it's a really, really big, it's uh, huge. It's almost the size of the, the wall of our classroom. And let me see, uh, this is another one that is very famous. This is one of my favorite paintings too in Chicago Art Institute. Well, anyways, I just wanted to show you um, so these are oil paintings. Um, these are mine. These are some of the oil paintings that I did. This is my friend, my, one of my best friends, uh, Victor. And I just wanted to show you the materials that we were using for this type of paintings. But I basically just painted this on top of six by six. Um, I just basically painted uh, this in six by six small uh, canvases. And I wanted to show you uh, some of the, the stuff that we use. 
Um, so first, well, usually in order to paint in oil, you need some sort of liquid to dilute the oil paint because oil paints are really strong. Basically, they're not like the paintings that we use that we usually use at school. We usually use acrylic or tempera. Um, and these brushes, these are made out of synthetics. These are synthetics. So they're basically um, plastic, but usually they used to sell during this time. Um, they still uh, do sell them. But for example, Sarat, he made them, he made this painting. This painting is huge. It's very, really big. And it's amazing. It's very famous because he actually made it with tiny little dots. He went like pop, 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 pop. But imagine this image like really, really big. So he actually made this painting with super tiny little dots and it took forever. Um, so Ral became very, very famous after this uh, presentation of this painting. So nobody had ever done anything like this. Basically, some when you get close to these colors, he's actually mixing the two colors. Um, it's very interesting. So, but I wanted to show you what I what I have, like the, the the oil paints that I use. Oh, sorry, I never opened this. So basically, this is what it looks like. It has like a liquid in there, and it's basically mineral spirits. It's just to clean the brushes. Um, so we also use this in order to mix the paint. And this is my this is my my color my box my paint box uh i love this box so much i have had it for the past four years now and so usually we we put some oil in here when we're painting because oil paints are kind of annoying they're really thick and they're really hard to maintain and control but so my color palette like i was uh, showing you guys explaining to you it's very simple in the sense that i use the three the three primaries camion yellow camion red light and ultramarine blue french ultramarine blue actually create in between these two you can create orange between this red and, and blue you can create uh, purple and if you mix these two you can create green but usually in order to paint in oils you most of the times you need raw umber which is sort of like it's sort of like a warm um it's sort of like a warm brownish black, but it's more brown. It, it, it tilts more towards brown, but it's very versatile. So this one works perfect, especially if you mix it up with the blue, so it turns into black. And then I also use um, magenta, just because when I'm painting, I want to create like different, like a, a stronger, a bigger range, and also usually. Uh, Oil painters use a lot of crimson, a lesser than crimson. So, which is, it? this color works well if you wanna paint uh, portraits. So this is white. So I just wanted to show you some of the tools that I have, since I never get the chance to bring the stuff that I usually use. This is amazing. I can um, measure things that I'm looking at, you know, and then transferring them into like a painting. So basically with this, let's say, I wanna create this in a bigger size. This is bigger. So it's just for transferring things.